coming up to John. He's a very popular guy. Everyone wants to talk to him. So, yeah, we're going to have to go solo at this point. <laughs> Alright guys, so uh, John Maxwell's all done kissing babies and signing autographs, so we can kind of move on now <laughs> with the video. Uh, I want to make a couple comments about the, the Pan America. Pan America is coming out next model year. I personally am super excited about the bike. I'm actually considering personally getting one of these bikes. I, I think it's amazing. Um, and then you also got the Street Fighter. We'll get a shot at that in just a minute. But Harley has this new platform they're coming out with. Uh, all liquid cool, dual overhead cam. A uh, modular platform where they're going to use the same like engine architecture and bolt different you know front ends and components to it to kind of meet different applications. I feel like personally this is a real pivotal time for Harley. They're investing a lot of money in this, I'm sure, and so this is kind of like a big move for them, kind of uncharted territory to kind of capture a new market. So it would be really interesting to, to see what happens. Personally, I think that they gotta they gotta make a good bike. You know, obviously that's that's the obvious thing. So if these bikes don't hit in certain like performance criteria and appeal to that newer younger market and hit a certain price point I don't think it's gonna work but if they can hit the right price point put up the right horsepower numbers and appeal to that younger demographic I think Harley is really gonna make uh, some serious waves and, and really get a lot of the market share and everything I agree 100% with all that I'm obviously the most exciting thing to me is a new engine that it's always easier on us if one engine type fits multiple types of models. So I'm excited to see, you know, different CC sizes of this, how it works, all that stuff. But this is also the first time I've ever seen the uh, PNA accessories for it that they're also simultaneously working on, of course. So it's cool that they're in true Harley form. You can instantly customize and make it your own if you're depending on what you're trying to do with it, you might have racks and extra lights and stuff like that, so. At your dealership specifically in Alabama, do you think there's a market for that bike? I don't think so. I don't know that I've ever seen a dual sport riding around in my area. Mm. I know in Europe, they're huge. In Europe, I saw somebody, it's, uh, dual sport has increased like 61% in the That's last nuts. few years. Like, That's crazy. Which is a huge part of what Harley wants in this market is their there's a whole area that their name isn't even talked about. So let's get some close-up shots of the Pan America here, guys. So this is an adventure bike. Obviously, there's a lot of features on here that point to dirt use. You got the knobby tires back here, which may actually change in final production. This is, after all, just a prototype still. But you've got spoke wheels, side-mounted spokes. You got tubeless tires on here, and you've got the sprocket drive, so chain and sprocket, I should say, as opposed to belt drive. Obviously, that's dirt application. The spoke wheels. You got the two-in-one exhaust here, upswept exhaust. You'll keep the exhausts out of the gravel and rocks. And you've got a trellis subframe here, reduced weight. A lot of people are speculating and I think it's been confirmed actually that this is a stressed member. The engine is used as a stressed member so that reduces the weight quite a bit as opposed to having that frame that encapsulates the engine to get its rigidity from. So the rigidity comes in the center of the bike from the engine. A lot of manufacturers are doing that now to really reduce weight. And you can see here that this is the 1250 Revolution Max and I saw this sticker and I was like wow Revolution Max. So what that points to is the Revolution engine was in out of the V-Rod. So it appears this engine shares a lot of the same architecture as the V-Rod and it's kind of a derivative of the V-Rod engine, namely the water-cooled, I think that's already been confirmed, this is 100% water-cooled engine. It appears to be a dual overhead cam and probably four valves per cylinder, I'm guessing, if it shares architecture with the V-Rod. The front of the bike here, the headlamp and everything, has a really cool signature look to it, very unique to the Harley-Davidson Pan America. Almost looks like Robocop in a way. So you can see the radiator down here and the skid plate as well. Obviously all things that are pretty commonplace on an adventure bike pretty much. You got dual disc brakes, Brembo calipers there, radial mounted. You got a 19 inch front wheel. I believe it was a 17 inch rear wheel. You got the hand guards and everything. The tank is orange and the rest of the bodywork is all gray, which up until this point, everything's been all gray. So again, this is all just prototype. I'm sure they're still tweaking things. You got a mono shock back there. The shock uses linkage to attach it to the swing arm, which is you know more applicable to off-road type application. And you can see like the seat up here again. So I'm, I'm really hoping this bike comes in. You know, if you can get under 
600 pounds, I'd be happy with that. But somewhere between 550 and 600 pounds, a lot of people are already speculating that this bike is going to be heavy, which obviously on an adventure bike, any type of off-road vehicle, weight is extremely important when you're going over you know, rocks and uphills and loose dirt and things like that. So weight's going to be a huge factor. While the Davidson hasn't released the weight yet or a lot of the other specs on the bike, actually, there's very little we know about these bikes at this point. They are saying that this bike will arrive in the 2020 calendar year. It sounds like, I'm just speculating here, that it's probably going to be released in the 2021 model year, which would be around August time of the 2020 calendar year. Many of you probably saw the video that Harley Davidson dropped last summer around July time on YouTube. I'll put a link in the description if you haven't seen it. But it was a huge bombshell where Harley Davidson basically announced to the world they're going to be coming out with these adventure bikes and the Street Fighters and they have this new custom cruiser that's coming out. And all these bikes are to be built off of this same platform, what I'm assuming they're calling the Revolution Max engine. So yeah, this engine has a lot of unanswered questions, uh, things like the type of power it's going to be putting out. Uh, it appears that like the crankcase and transmission are integrated into one unit, which is also a good weight savings as well. Yeah, it'll be really interesting to, to see all the specs that come out on this thing. I'm really hoping this thing puts up big numbers. You know, I'm really hoping between 100 and 20, 130 horsepower at least to compete with some of the other bike manufacturers out there, they're going to need to put up big horsepower numbers. Like a KTM's adventure bike, you know, that thing puts up, I want to say like 158 horsepower, something like that, which, you know, you it's probably overkill for most people, but you know, the KTM comes in at about 18.5 and the BMW is the other big competitor in the adventure bike space. And those come in for their top of the line at just under $20,000. So I think if Harley Davidson can come in, you know, around maybe the high teens, definitely not over 20, but if they can come in the, the high mid to high teens and this thing weighs not much more or less than 600 pounds, I think the BMW weighs about 630 pounds wet. But you know, if they can compete on that level, you know, and then you basically add in all the other great aspects that Harley Davidson brings to the table, the customization, just the style, the, the culture, the heritage of Harley Davidson, just the pride of ownership of owning a Harley, then you know I think this thing could really take off. Me personally, I'm super excited about it. Like I said, I'm, I'm thinking about getting one for myself. And there's there's several guys at our dealership as well that are talking about getting them as well. So yeah, kind of a cool cool thing. Uh, Harley Davidson's really is part of their More Roads to Harley Davidson initiative. They're trying out these new uh, motorcycle segments that they've never stepped foot in before. So right now is a very, very pivotal time for Harley Davidson, and it'll be really ex uh, exciting to see how this pans out, no pun intended. So let's take a closer look at the Street Fighter here. So this is going to be built on the same modular platform that Harley Davidson plans on building their Pan America, their Street Fighter, and their Custom Cruiser all on. So again, the modular platform basically means that it's going to be like the same like core frame and engine and you know they're going to be doing different like subframes and forks and gas tanks and wheels and things like that on the same kind of core platform with the same engine which it looks like they're calling the revolution max but i guess that's yet to be determined but yeah you can see here inverted front end you got the brembo brakes you know all high performance you know parts and features this is a 975 cc engine which harley davidson's actually said that they're going to have a whole line of street fighters and a whole line of, of adventure bikes and they're going to come in different uh, displacement uh, variations so here's a shot of the tail section here the exhaust and wheels there and just for those of you who aren't really familiar with the street fighter genre, it basically has its roots that can be traced back to like the UK. And they're basically were sport bikes that the fairings were taken off, so like a naked sport bike. And then they'd put like upright style handlebars on there, like moto style, like what you'd find on a dirt bike to give you more of that up, upright ergonomics. So a combination of the upright ergonomics with the different bars and peeling off all the fairings to give it like that exposed engine look, that's kind of what made it a street fighter. And you know, there were bikes that really paved the way for the street fighter. You know, they, they customized it that way. Then manufacturers started picking up on it in like the 90s when like the Triumph Speed Triple came out and Ducati has a street fighter that you know, is a really popular bike as well. So yeah, it's definitely a, a style that you know, appeals to a, a, a different type of customer other than the sport bikes. I feel like it's more of a streetable bike. You know, sport bikes, I, I hate riding them just because you're you're bent over. Unless you're on a track, I just feel like they're super impractical. And so, you know, something like a naked uprider or a street fighter, you know, I would be more apt to ride. Although most of them are too small for me and they're not really, they don't really fit my type of riding style. But, you know, I can definitely appreciate them for what they are. I mean, they're just fast motorcycles. Yeah, I feel like the styling points that Harley has are, are really good. The thing about Harley is just, I just love their lines. They're really clean, bulky, simplistic lines on Harley Davidson. You don't have like a whole lot of lot going on as far as like welding and electrical and just like unsightly parts like you know exhaust and things like that that just look you know funky and out of place like everything just all fits together really well and you know just all, oh, always goes back to the fit and finish with Harley Davidson is just second to none so you know uh, them coming out with this bike I just feel like it's going to appeal to a little bit different crowd than the, the typical street fighters that we see on the market right now again I, I think it's just all, all going to come down to value you know and, and what customers 
customers perceive as value. You know, do these do these bikes put up the same type of horsepower that the competition does, and at what price point? So you know, there's a price for everything, and you know Harley Davidson, you know they're not cheap. Their manufacturing isn't cheap. So you know if they're too much above the competition, you know even though there's the other benefits that come with Harley Davidson, I still feel like. You know, if their their powers are if their power is lacking and the price point is too high, I feel like this bike is going to miss the mark. So again, that's yet to be determined. You know, we'll we'll see what happens when they come out. I'm really curious to hear you guys' feedback. If you're watching this video right now and if you ride an adventure bike currently, or if you've owned one in the past or own one currently, let me know. Would you consider the Pan America? What do you like about it? And under what circumstances would you buy one? You know, is it certain power or price point? Or you know, what is it about the Pan America that makes it you know a bike that would be worthy of you buying it? Or you know, what is it about the bike? that makes you think that you don't want to buy it and that the competition's better. And if you currently ride a sport bike, a street fighter, like a naked upright or something like that, let me know what your first impression is of this Harley Davidson street fighter. And same thing, would you buy it? Under what criteria would you buy it? Uh, is it a price point, a power thing? You know, let me know what you think about it. Uh, especially those of you who have never owned a Harley before, just because you're not really into the whole cruiser thing, or you're not into the style, or whatever it may be about Harley Davidson. You know, let me know if you'd consider going over to the brand for one of these two bikes. Uh, I'd be really curious to hear from you guys. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching. And if you have any questions below, let me know. Yeah, let me know what your thoughts are on this thing. I, I just really think that a lot of people are excited, but I think a lot of Harley Davidson's core customers. And let me hear from you guys as well. You know, if you've ridden Harley your entire life, what what do you think about the new roads or the new you know direction that Harley Davidson is going with some of these bikes? You're kind of opening up kind of a new like high-end street fighter genre, I would think. And so you, if you got kind of that guy that wants the Harley quality and the available parts and accessories, I feel like this bike is really going to appeal to that person. I'm excited to see one and ride one. I think that now that may do in my market. I'm not 100% sure, but Military Town uh, is where I'm at, and military is a wide range of age and incomes and stuff, so it does make things a little different. The Pan America, I don't think there's anywhere to ride it. <laughs> it would be worth owning one. But the Street Fighter, I think, I'm excited about it. All right, guys. Well, this is Matt and John signing off. Thanks again, John, for uh, yeah, joining in. And uh, I pulled him aside and want to thank John for his time. Again, if you guys haven't followed John Maxwell, go to his YouTube channel. He has an awesome YouTube channel, a lot of really good Harley Davidson content. That's more from the perspective of a technician. He's a technician, um, and so a lot of those like how tos with the technical side of the bikes that I don't do, you're probably gonna see more of that content on John's channel. So definitely check him out. John's also gonna be posting a lot of the videos here at the dealer show as well. Um, I'll, I'll be doing some more content as well on the bikes, uh, more in-depth information on, on the new stuff especially. So thanks a lot for joining us guys. Take care, bye-bye.